Hello, fellow Rosarians. Thank you for joining me today. We are talking about propagation, which I am super excited about. I have been trying and trying for probably two seasons now to propagate, and I've had limited success. And so I've been trying to figure out what I've been doing wrong. One of my friends, Sang, has a YouTube channel also that I'm going to link to, and Backyard Paradise, her videos, she shares how to propagate. And the first time I can say that I was truly successful was using Sang's method of propagation. Fraser Farm took it to a whole nother level for me and I have dug into all of Jason's videos because he just explains it so well. I've learned a lot over the past year or so trying to propagate and I've propagated florist roses, of course, roses from my garden, nepeta, I'm trying boxwood. So I'm really trying to expand the things that I propagate. We did a video a few weeks ago with Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and he's helping me tweak uh, what I'm doing wrong. And I think somehow in my head, I picked up some really bad habits, which is really over loving a rose. I'm going to go into, um, at the end of this video, I'll share with you everything that I was doing wrong. But until then, let's talk about what we need to do right. So to get started, when do we take cuttings from our garden? You can take them any time of the year. To be the most successful, you want to try to look for a cane that has just finished blooming or it's at the end of its bloom because that's when you're going to see some telltale signs that that cane is ready. And I'll show you in a second canes that are ready and some that are not and some that have gone entirely too far and now they're starting to leaf out and so they're not good candidates for propagation either. So the best time to propagate would be spring and probably fall, but I bet you can grab some of them in the summer too. Now, during dormancy, when you're saying, oh, I'm so bored and I wish I had started propagating, you can still propagate. You're going to go to your local store and pick up a dozen roses. Just pick up something that you like, and even if you don't, if it's a good deal, and you're looking at it and saying, these canes look like they're ready to propagate, give it a try. You can order roses online, have them sent to your house. Um, if your uh, significant other gives you roses for Valentine's Day, try to propagate them. What do you have to lose? The only negative thing about propagating a rose that you don't know a lot about, these florist roses, we don't know. What is their makeup? Do they want to be a climber? Do they want to be a shrub? We have no idea. So it's just going to be a surprise, but it'll give you a lot of practice to think about doing that during the winter too. So let's go out in the yard and let me show you some good candidates for propagation and canes that you want to pass on. So how do we know that a rose is ready to propagate? Uh, the first thing that is a telltale sign is that it has a bloom that is getting ready to expire. And when you look closely at this, I'm going to try to get it closer. If I look in the nodes, and so I know that you hear a lot of times, um, are the nodes swelling? So let's talk about what a node is. A node is everywhere that there is a leaf. Put my knee here to hold this. If I were to take this leaf and snap it back off, do you see how it's pink? pink and it's pushing here. Let's see if I can zoom in. Look at that. Wow. Okay. So it's pink and pink and it's starting to push here. So all of these are nodes and you want, when you cut this and propagate it and put it into your rooting hormone, you want at least four nodes. So this would be this could be one here, but if I said one, where that leaf is, two, three, four. So I want to cut this to first get it off the rose bush. I'm gonna give it a little bit more length. So I'm gonna take it down to here, and then I'll show you how to clean this up when we get inside. But a node is simply 
where a leaf is and where it is bulging right there. Now make sure that you're using your alcohol after each cut because we want everything as sanitized as possible. So again, we've got one, two, three, four. I'm gonna take it down right here. Let's talk about a rose that is not ready to propagate. I have a bloom here. So it would make sense that the nodes are red and bulging, but look, if, if I look here, you don't see anything pink in that node in there. And if I look down a little bit further, there are no nodes on this to be able to propagate. This rose here has an expired bloom. Uh, if I were to look here in the nodes, they are not pink in here at all. If you look at this one, do you see how that node is green? Um, it has a very little pink tip at the edge. There's a possibility that you could be successful if you were to propagate this one. If you look here, do you see how it has a red node right here? This one is ready to propagate, but almost missing the point where it's too far. Let's find another one that is too far. This one here really is too far because it has, do you see how it's starting to push the leaf out? So this would not be a good node to take because it's gonna spend its energy towards pushing leaves rather than pushing roots when we put that one in the soil. Okay, so now we're back inside. Let me show you what you're gonna do with those cuttings. I've taken a couple of extra ones too so that I can share that with you. So I have uh, my soil mix. Now I've done it a couple of different ways where I have peat and perlite and then I mix about a 50-50 ratio. But in talking to Jason, I think he said that he wanted me to add a little bit less peat than I had been adding. Um, but that is hand mixing it. And my favorite video, uh, my friend Vanessa put together, and I'm gonna link to that. And that shows you how to mix it up. And it's not as intuitive as you would think, because for me, I'm just going to you know, put in my mixture, I'm going to spray the water and you'll see when you do it the first time, the water just runs off of the peat. So you really need to give it a little bit of time after you spray in some water, let it soak in, come back, mix it up, do it again. And it could be like a 10 minute process for you to do that. So get it good and mixed up. And when you squeeze that soil, you wanna make sure that it's not dripping, nothing comes out. It should be moist to your touch, but not so that water is sopping out of it. What I'm using today, instead of uh, peat and perlite separate that I'm mixing together, is ProMix. And I'm using ProMix BX because I couldn't find the HP. HP is high porosity, which means that it's going to drain really well. I'm using BX, and that's just a general multi-purpose multi propagating medium. So I have mixed that in the same way um, that the video I'm going to share from Vanessa, how she mixes hers. I'm letting it sit, soak in, make sure that I can't um, squeeze water out of it because I don't want it to be too wet. So now that I have used my plastic containers because I want to see the roots coming um, out in about three weeks, this is a great way to do that. So now that I have set aside my soil, I have my cuttings here and what I want to share with you is, of course, I've sanitized my table and I've used my alcohol spray. Um, but what I want to show you, and I'm hoping I can get close enough for you to see it, is this bottom node here. Do you see how it looks like there's a half moon at the bottom of it? Right there where the line is. I want to prune as close to that node as I can without cutting into it. I have cut it as close to this node as I can because that's where the most energy is um, in this node and it will start to shoot the roots directly from there. I'm counting how many nodes I have, but if I have more than four, it'll be fine. You just wanna try to keep it at three to four. So one, two, three, four. So I have four. And so then with my leaf sets, 
I want to reduce the amount of energy that the plant has to think about using to feed these sets of leaves. So I'm going to cut it down to this situation. I could even get rid of um, this one if I wanted. When I've been talking to my friends in the propagation group, some people have success with removing all the leaves. I have found so far, and I'm keeping good notes, that I have quicker success with rooting if I leave the leaves on. But let's say that you took a cane and it, the nodes looked beautiful and they were ready to propagate and it didn't have any leaves, try it. There's a chance that you're still gonna have success without having leaves. So you also wanna make sure that you're not pulling cuttings that have black spot. Um, also take a quick look since you're bringing them in from the outdoors, just look underneath and see if there's any budworms. I have, with my nepeta in the past, I've done a lot of cuttings and you know nepeta is kind of frilly and wild and I missed a budworm. And when I came out the next morning, not only was there a huge budworm that had filled itself with all of my nepeta, but they were shredded. There was like nothing left. So just take a quick look and make sure that there are no bugs that you're bringing in with your babies. So now that I have the cutting, I am not taking off any of the thorns. You may see that people snap them. If you were to just take this, uh, I'm going to show you. <laughs> if you were to just take this thorn and put your finger on it and push it in the opposite direction, do you see how it just came off? And what it does, I don't have my glasses, um, but it, causes a little bit of a wound onto the rose. And some people will take all of the thorns off. And I think I've even seen it in the David Austin videos where they do that. Um, but they're doing it so that they don't harm themselves as they are touching them. Uh, but we're not going to wound it further by taking the thorns off. And talking with Jason, he said that he doesn't want to introduce uh, more bacteria or places um, that the rose has to struggle with fighting off any kind of issues. So I have had success with leaving the thorns on. I'm using uh, Clonex, which is a 3% hormone. And I shared with you in the video that I did yesterday that you have a choice of, hormones have a lot of different percentages. And based on the difficulty of the uh, plant that you're trying to propagate, you choose your hormone level. And so for roses, choose 3% or 1%. I've heard, success across the board from using either. I just like a gel because powder, I'm worried about, you know, tapping it and what if it doesn't have enough hormone on the whole thing, whereas gel will, you know, grab onto that whole cane and it holds well. So I like gel. Um, when I'm using an 8% hormone, I'm using that on my boxwoods because it's a tougher cane that is just more difficult to root. So I'm using 8%. I have tried 8% on my roses and it calluses in really weird places, like all the way up the rose till it looks like a Frankenstein cane, like it definitely has scale or some kind of an issue. And I can tell that the rose is just totally freaked out. It will die. So I would suggest not using 8%. And I've even heard some people who don't have to use any hormone and they are like unicorns, <laughs> they've got the touch. So I would use between one and 3% to give your rose as much uh, help as possible and gently guide them into rooting. I keep a little container of hormone and I just pour from here into this little container because you don't want to dip directly into your hormone bottle because what if your rose had an issue, a fungus of some kind. So this just helps to keep it as sanitized as possible. One of my friends also uses an empty medicine bio bottle. Uh, it's tall and thin, and that's the perfect way to put a cane in there also. So I'm dipping uh, into my hormone liquid here and just you know giving it a, a hot second in the liquid. And then after I get it to that point, I have a Sharpie and it's, I'm just using it for the size of the Sharpie. If I take the soil and I'm just going to depress, I'm not going down that far. I'm only going down a very little bit to give the roses a place to rest. 
but we don't want to put the node too far down from my experience because I'm really, in my, I, I probably should have said up front, my struggles are humidity related. Your environment may not be. If you're out on the west coast where it's very dry, you're going to have to tweak some things from all of the videos that you watch because everybody's environment is going to be a little bit different. Okay, let's do another one real quick. So this one, I have a little bud at the top. I'm going to cut off the bloom. And what I'm left with is no leaves. We just talked about that. But I still want to give this a go because when I looked out at this one in the yard, it had a lot of swelling nodes like it was ready to go. This is Evelyn, people. I'm so excited. So let's see if I can propagate this baby. And now I'm going to get it as close to the node as I can. We talked about that. We're going to dip it in the rooting hormone and pop it in that hole. All right, I'm going to crank through the rest of these pretty quick. So in the past, I used to put one rose in each cup. And I learned from Jason that he's doing it in a commercial environment and he needs to put as many roses into an area as possible. I learned from that that I should put three in a container and as they root, and hopefully they will, the roots will not tangle together because they are so small. And as soon as I see in three weeks that I have been successful rooting, uh, we, I'm going to tell you the next steps to be able to um, successfully remove the roses from the same little container and not hurt those roots. Uh, but you just have to be gentle and tease them apart and they will come out just fine. So in one cup now, I've got my labels. We talked about this yesterday. Alexa, what's today's date? It's Tuesday, October 19th. By the way, you can ask me for the sustainability tip of the day. Okay. Thank you, Alexa. So I'm adding the name of my rose and I am putting the date and I always add, for me, I'm adding the hormone number because I play with those. You know, I want to take notes for myself so that I can see and try to lock this down for my environment if um, what hormone level I need. So I have just in here um, my heating pad into some empty soil just so I can manage the temperature on here. I mentioned to you yesterday that I keep a humidity meter. We'll put it in here a second so you can see what's going on with my humidity. The humidity is climbing. You can't see this right now, but it's already at over 70%. It gets up to 90% humidity in here. So although you're not seeing condensation inside of the cookie jars, it has a lot of moisture to keep um, the cuttings happy. The humidity meter was maybe $10, really worth the price to have comfort that even though you're not seeing condensation, that there's enough humidity. So I'm going to take um, these cuttings and sit them in here. So for my tracking purposes, what I do, um, just to make it in, in case I can't see this tag, I keep a, you'll see blue painter's tape here. I write the date that I am looking, that three weeks for to check on it for propagation. And then the sticker down below has the dates that I actually propagate in them. Let me show you while I'm here what roots look like. So do you see these roots coming down here? So what I do is I watch them closely until they root and then I'm keeping track of how long I'm keeping them in the humidity. If you leave it in the humidity too long, it will um, rot. So I am only leaving them in for two weeks beyond when I see roots and then we'll take them out. So my lighting, I keep the lighting on for 10 hours a day there's a lot of conflicting advice that you'll receive there and you just need to find what works for you. For the heating mat, I am trying heat only if it dips below 70 degrees um, just to keep them going. The other thing that I'm doing to propagate is I'm using um, the bins here. And 
these, I have been successful with this also. I don't need to mist at all. Just putting them in there is enough condensation. Um, as I mentioned, I'm trying the leader method. I'm keeping this in a window and all you need to do is your soil, you're gonna pot it up soil like normal in your container. And then you're going to just pop a soda liter on top of it. And I'm looking down here and everybody looks happy in here right now. So let's talk about why I have failed. So I think that it'll help you. Um, in the past, I thought that they needed to be misted every day. And some people may have success with that, and maybe they're in a very dry environment, but I killed just about every cutting because I was, you know, misting them either in their bin, I would open it up and mist them every day and close it and tuck them all in to their, you know, under their light. And I had, you know, a rooting here or there take, but it eventually died. And everybody kept on saying, leave them alone. All you do is just pop them in the uh, soil and never do anything again. And I had such a hard time grasping that concept. It really is true. And I can't convey that enough that you are going to dip them in the hormone, put them in the soil, put them in whatever container you decide, whether that's a bin or a two liter or a cookie jar, and you really don't mess with them again. I have never had to add humidity again in weeks. We're at three weeks now, and I've never had to add humidity again. Do not overwater or mist. Um, make sure that you really are looking at that soil when you first mix it up, that when you squeeze it, it's that no extra water drips out of it. If you have made it that wet, add a little bit more of the um, mixture so that we can use some of that soil up. So let's talk about what I do every day. So every morning I say hello and I take the lids off of them. I do that and you'll find that in Seng's video that she takes off the lids also. They just get too much condensation buildup and that goes for my cookie jars as well as the bins. So I take off the lids and in this case, I'm just gonna kind of move it to the side. I don't have to take it all the way off, but just move it to the side for, um, I think Seng does it for a couple of minutes, under five minutes max. And when I shared with her that I'm leaving mine off for an hour every day, she said, oh no, <laughs> there's no way, don't do that. But that's what's working for me right now and I'm successful. So be aware that you might have to take off the lid because they've got a little bit of condensation in there and you are going to have to decide, you're the master rosarian in your garden, how long that lid needs to be taken off. So I've made that judgment call that I need to take off the lid for a little bit longer every day than maybe some other people need to. Uh, every day I'm also coming out and um, I'm just turning them to look through and make sure that none of the canes have browned. When they get rot from the cane from having too much moisture, it is going to brown from the bottom up. And I have an example here for you. This is what it looks like when it starts to brown up from a cane. And so within that three week period, you'll start to see whether or not you've been successful. And this kind of happens pretty quick where all of a sudden you'll see it creeping up and creeping up until it overtakes the entire cane. As soon as you see this, just take it out. There is no hope um, for this cane to be able to survive. So it is pushing all of its energy towards leafing out. So this one's done, sadly. Um, so that is what we were looking for every day, and we're going to take those out. If you have dropped leaves, because you know sometimes um, roses are going to drop leaves, I like to have this. Um, they'll be in my store for you to look at, and these are just really long tweezers to be able to get in there and kind of play Jenga or Operation, you know, how you have to work around stuff. So this helps you to get in between the canes down to the potting soil to remove any leaves that have dropped because you want to make sure that you're not, you know, having anything with, you know, black spot or any kind of fungus on those leaves itself. So go ahead and get everything out. 
no misting. We're just saying hello, good morning, but no misting. If you are using a heat mat, a mistake I made one time was I just plugged in the heat mat and walked away for a day, came back, and I used a thermometer. Um, this is just an oven grade thermometer that I can spread, I can shoot on here, and this tells me that it's 75 degrees um, here. So I came out and it was over 100 degrees. I lost a lot of cuttings that day from a silly mistake. So now that's why I make sure that I'm, I always have that thermometer for my heat mat inside a jar um, so that it's not getting too warm. Other mistakes I've made, you're gonna be super tempted to pull on the, um, the roses and it will give back if it has started to root and you'll, they won't just lift out of the soil wait to play with that until you hit that three-week point. I assure you, before that three-week point, they're not going to be throwing roots. It's just when the calendar hits that three-week that you start to see some really fun things. So try not to pull on them to test to see if it's rooted until that three-week point. So other ways that I have failed, I cut the node in the wrong place. I had no idea where I was cutting. I was cutting everywhere. So I really wasn't giving the rows the best chance to root. So make sure that you're cutting it as close to that node as possible without cutting into the node. And then that node is going to be in the soil, but not too deep. Not having clean soil, I would try to propagate and failed, and then I would reuse that soil. I failed not knowing when to take the cutting. And I didn't realize what I was looking for with the nodes. So we've shared that with you so that you can be looking for that pink. Um, and sometimes the nodes will look different. And so depending on the variety, the more experience that you get looking at the cane, you'll say, I think this one's ready. It's just not showing me um, the pink, but it really looks like that node is swelling throughout the whole cane. Um, you'll just get more experience as you go along. The other thing that I'm doing is keeping a notebook. And I encourage you to do that where you are writing down date of the rooting, when it roots. I would say the variety, because some roses are gonna take much longer to root than others. So write the variety name, write whether or not it has leaves or not, in case you're trying lots of different methods where you have some cuttings that don't have leaves, put the percent hormone, how many days it took to root, and anything else that would be pertinent to you. Maybe you kept it at 10 hours a day light. Um, so anything like that. So those are the things that I can suggest for how I have failed in the past. The only other thing that I'll add that we'll get to in the next step is after they have rooted, I failed because I either took them out of the potting soil too early. I saw roots and I potted them up and it died very quickly. Um, in other situations, I have left them in the humidity dome for too long after they rooted up. How long is too long? I think I left it in there for four to six weeks in the humidity dome, closed up, they died. <laughs> so there's a fine line and it's fun to play with. And I think that it'll give you something to work on over the winter to figure out what works and what doesn't. The last thing that I want you to do is print out Jason's uh, material. From the video that I did with him on a, learning about propagation, all the Q&A, so I print out Jason's uh, material and I'll pop it up on the screen for you to see. But if you want to download it, I'm gonna link to the site for you to be able to get it. First slide is going to show you semi-hardwood. Those are the cuttings that we're taking right now. If it were hardwood cutting, it would not bend at all. So semi-hardwood is, um, it has a little bit of give to it, just a little bit. So that's what we are trying to propagate with. And if you are taking a cutting from a rose cane that has recently bloomed, it's definitely semi-hardwood. You just don't wanna make sure that you're taking a fresh new growth that is red. 
um, because that is called softwood and that is very difficult to propagate. The other thing that I'm looking at is this one. I'll put it up on the screen for you. This is such an important piece of information for you to have on your cutting table. And it just reminds you, it's gonna take three to five weeks to root. Uh, what ha and it tells you in each stage. So when we get to stage two with early rooting, we are actually gonna start fertilizing it and we are going to harden them off out of getting used to being in this humidity dome. But don't worry too much about that. I'll do another video in the future and walk you through that. But I hope that this is helpful. So it gives you the basics of starting to propagate. Don't get stressed out. I really want you to have a good time with it this winter and realize that it takes time to be able to be successful with propagation. And so this is at least my second season, if not my third trying. And you can try with roses from your garden, but if time passes and they are dormant by the time that you're ready to dig in and, and try that, try florist roses. They're available year round. And the fun part about that is if I was at the store, I could really take a peek in there at all of the canes to see if they're ready to propagate. So I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for joining me.